Goldberg interview. In February of 2016, a man claiming he worked for some secret government agency contacted me. This agency allegedly monitors and investigates paranormal activity. Because I'm contacted somewhat regularly by people with similar claims, I wasn't putting too much stock into the man's story. But I finally agreed to meet with him when he informed me that he was dying and he wanted to give his deathbed testimony, as he put it, before he died. I refer to this man as Walter. It's not his real name, of course. He asked me to meet him at a budget motel just outside of Phoenix. He was staying there for a few days because he was in town to attend a UFO conference that was taking place nearby. I had considered checking out the UFO conference anyway, so I agreed to meet Walter. It took me a good 45 minutes to reach the motel from my office in downtown Phoenix. When I pulled into the parking lot, I regretted my decision to meet with this guy. This cheap dump was your stereotypical rundown bargain motel. The sign was faded, and I seem to recall it was missing a letter. Maybe the O? Uh, weeds were growing out of the cracks in the parking lot and the concrete path leading to the office. Bars covered the office windows, and I could see what I assume was a homeless man enjoying a refreshing bath in the pool. I pulled out my phone, intending to call Walter to cancel our meeting, but as I watched the homeless man bathing in the dingy motel pool, I laughed to myself and put my phone back in my pocket. I had already made the trip, and the setting alone was already great material for a story. I remember standing outside room number nine, questioning my judgment, and wondering why I always put myself in situations like that. Meeting random weirdos by myself? I think a full minute passed before I finally knocked. The door opened slowly. Before I even saw Walter, I was greeted by the unpleasant smell of the stale, aged room, saturated by decades of cigarettes, sex, and unsanitary guests preserved by subpar housekeeping. As the door fully opened, my gaze shifted down to see a sad, frail man in a wheelchair. I introduced myself, and Walter invited me in. Walter wasn't what I was expecting. I'm not sure what I was expecting. He was in his 60s, well-dressed, soft-spoken, and he had a kind face. He invited me to make myself comfortable. That was a tall order, given that awful smell and the unsanitary conditions. The room was small and void of any sitting options, but he motioned to the bed, so I sat awkwardly on the corner of the unmade bed and pulled out my phone to record the interview. You're okay with me recording this, right? That's why I contacted you, and that's why you're here. Okay, absolutely. I just wanted to make sure. Well, I guess go ahead and start then. We're recording. What I'm about to tell you has never been heard by anyone outside select government agencies. I've kept these secrets for nearly 40 years, locked away from friends, family, everyone. Most of my life has been a deep, dark secret that I swore, under penalty of death, that I would take to my grave. So why do it? I mean... You've withheld this information from everybody in your life for this long. Why come forward now, especially knowing that you're putting yourself and anyone you know at risk? I haven't had friends for a long time. The last of my family recently passed on, and I'm on my way to the grave. My secret life, living with the burden of what I know, has cost me everything. The things I know, the things I've seen, you probably won't believe me when I tell you, but I'm going to tell you anyway, because the public should know these things that I know. I've lived with this burden too long. You said you're on your way to the grave. You're dying? The doctor tells me I'll be dead and gone in a matter of months so I'm no longer restricted by the fear of what they will do to me for disclosing their tightly held secrets. I don't know if you want to talk about it, but 
Why? Uh, what? The doctors they make us go to tell me it's cancer. Who knows? It might be cancer. But they're always vague on specifics. And I've been trained to know better than to question what they say or probe for any detail. We might talk about that some more later, but we should probably start. So I guess go ahead and get into it. Tell me about Vandenberg. The Truman administration established an initiative in 1952 to deal with issues related to paranormal phenomena. A special index was activated as part of this initiative to catalog relevant communication and, in some situations, conduct field investigations to acquire additional information. This index is known as the Vandenberg Index, and it's still active today. A clandestine government agency manages the index. Its agents perform surveillance, monitoring everything from letters and email messages to phone conversations and text messages. Communications fitting agency criteria is tagged and entered into the index system. And as I mentioned, agents also participate in field investigation if a case merits it. All right. I'm sure you know that there are always people making extraordinary claims of conspiracies and secret government dealings with paranormal activity. I'm not saying that I don't believe you, but do you have anything to substantiate what you're claiming? You can read this if you like. What is it? It's a letter from the last case I worked on before I was forced to retire from the agency. Go on, read it. All right, let's see. Looks like an email addressed to a UFO organization. I've been experiencing alien influences for the past three years. These entities control my thoughts, and they talk to me telepathically. They've used at least three different voices when they talk to me. But most of the time, they talk to me with my own voice. I know it sounds crazy, but I'm not crazy. I'm an intelligent, college-educated, ordinary guy. I'm married and have three children, but they don't believe me. They look at me like I've lost my mind. Believe me, I thought about that, but I know I'm not crazy. I know the difference between fantasy and reality, and I know that the voice and the thoughts in my head aren't mine, and I know who is putting them there. Hmm. I've seen UFOs since I was six years old. I remember waking up at night, looking out my window, and seeing UFOs parked over our house. I don't know what they were doing, but they just sat there like they were watching our house or waiting for something. I still see UFOs over my house at night, but I started seeing flashes of light outside the windows. I think they've started watching me from the ground too. Three years ago, I was in an elevator at work. Two of my coworkers got on the elevator with me. I worked with these two for many years, but that day on the elevator, they both looked at me and they had strange looks on their faces. It's like they weren't themselves. Then I heard both of their voices in my head at the same time. They were laughing at me and telling me how everyone at work hated me and that I should jump out the window. Wow. They torment me inside my head, saying all sorts of terrible things and filling my mind with the darkest thoughts. All my friends have abandoned me and I'm sure my family will soon too. They think I'm nuts. I didn't know what to do, so I contacted a local paranormal investigation group. The group met me at my house in January. They helped me understand that the people who are controlling my thoughts are really bad shape-shifting aliens who can take on any form they want. They scanned me and told me they detected an implant in me because their instruments showed that there's something inside me giving off signals. They explained that this is how the aliens are able to control my thoughts. The paranormal group suggested that I submit a report to you, and they said you would probably be able to tell me who I can contact to get the implant removed. Please help me. My life is a living hell. I can't take the mental and physical exhaustion from these mind attacks much longer. Hmm, okay. This, this is mildly interesting, but y you know this guy sounds completely crazy, right? The subject was added to the agency surveillance list shortly after the interception of this email. Yes, of course his mental health is in question. 
but we did confirm UFO activity over his residence, and the agency continues to monitor him as a subject of interest. This is just one example of the type of content we collected and investigated on a daily basis. Do you have any other files that might have anything more, I don't know, uh, more interesting or anything to really back up your claim that Vandenberg even exists? Turn off the recording. Uh, okay, sure. Walter, being the gentle, soft-spoken man he was, kindly suggested that I just forget about publishing his testimony because he felt that my questions hinted at disbelief. Although his assumption was correct, if he had truly been a secret government investigator, he, more than most, should have understood the need for evidence to support a claim, especially a hard-to-believe claim. I thanked him for his time and told him to contact me if he changed his mind, because I really did want to probe his claims more. If he had something more than another run-of-the-mill story about a paranoid guy claiming aliens spoke to him, you damn right I would publish that. But I never did hear from Walter after our meeting. I have no idea if anything he told me was true. But the likelihood of at least some of it being true improved when, a couple weeks later, I received an envelope in the mail with no return address. Inside was Walter's obituary, cut out from the Tulsa World newspaper. Apparently Walter was originally from Tulsa, and according to the obituary, he had just died a few days prior to my receiving the mysterious mail. It listed his cause of death as natural causes. Needless to say, receiving this freaked me out a little. Nobody knew about my meeting with Walter, except for my two colleagues at Redactus. I still don't know what to make of Walter's claims. I really wish he would have provided me with something more concrete, but the Vandenberg Index is definitely something that's on my radar now, but I'm pretty doubtful that I'll find anything or hear anything more about it.